Florida is a tough place to be. It's a tough job. I didn't realize there was so much detail in the game of softball until I came here. Game-wise, he's really big. Um, I'm working on the mental side of the game. He just notices everything and his brain just doesn't stop. I'd go here though. I'd go here. We did change the culture here at Florida and the expectations and I didn't expect them to, you know, to, to win some games. I expected them to win every game. His role is to get this program where it needs to be and that's not, you can't do that if you're everyone's friend. I talked to our team last year, alright guys, time to set a goal, what do you guys want? And we went around the room and you know, you did all this stuff and then Aubrey Moreau says, we all came here to win a national championship and I said, hmm. I don't need to set goals when you got players like that. I'll stay out of their way. Ready? Really good. Alex, listen up. Okay, one thing, the one most important part of the, the, the conversation that I didn't talk to you about was swinging the strikes. No matter what, you have to swing at strikes. You got to swing at strikes. Okay, I don't care what the umpire does, says, or acts, you have to swing at strikes. With two strikes, with a big zone or whatever, then you might have to, to adjust and protect and fight and foul balls off, but you got to swing strikes. Growing up, I played baseball, I think since I was probably five. You know, my pitching technique was just throw the ball as hard as you can. And that's how I kind of kind of grew up, just throw it as hard as you can and hopefully some good things will happen. If there was a sport that anybody in my family did, it was, it was race motorcycles. Uh, everybody from, um, you know, my, my grandma had a motorcycle. Middle school to high school age was tackle football on Thanksgiving, you know. That's what my family did. You know, we bowled, we went water skiing, we raced motorcycles, and then I was kind of the, the outcast who, who came up with this baseball you know, ambition. I played high school baseball um, my sophomore year, my junior year, and my senior year at, at Cerritos. I can always remember being a late bloomer. Um, I was always, you know, solid. I was never the best on my team, was never the worst on my team. So getting a chance to go play at Oklahoma in what was then the Big Eight um, was really, really special. I, I clearly knew once I stepped on the junior college field that I wasn't good enough. Um, to make it to the big leagues and I hope to have an opportunity to play Division One baseball and I hope to have an opportunity to play professionally, um, which I did. I finished with the Phillies um, in 97. Um, my first coaching job was in Alaska. Got a chance to go back to Alaska coaching baseball. And I learned a lot, not just about baseball, but um, you know, how important your, your circle, your network, and, and if you want to coach, um, it's going to be really important to, to, to kind of come in with a good, you know, good foundation and I felt like I gained that through all my experiences. And Perry drills one to the deep left and the Sooners grab the early lead. Patty called me in January of um, 1999. One of her coaches left, took another job and had a job opening. I went down and interviewed, I think it was on a Wednesday. I think she hired me on a Thursday. I was back to work with her on Monday, the following Monday, and ready to start a career and start a family. And uh, I think Patty gave me that opportunity. And probably the best advice I was given, um, Patty had given me a Mike Kendrea um, VHS tape. And so I watched it a few times. Just watched him and listened to him talk about softball and hitting and fielding and throwing. And he had a phone number on his VHS tape. And I called him and I was, I mean, I almost kind of fell backwards a little bit. He answered the phone. Um, called him and he answered the phone. It was a, I want to say it was like my second day on the job. I called him in the, in the early morning. He answered the phone and I asked him, I said, Coach, you know, I, I just got a job at Oklahoma. Uh, I don't know anything about softball. Give me some advice. And he said, listen, 
He said, I coach baseball, um, just like you. I'm sure we probably have a lot of similar you know, background and um, coach it the same. We had a great thing with those players. I, I really felt very connected with them. They taught me a ton. I learned about slappers. I learned about, you know, dives and slides. And I was so surprised at how fast and how strong and um, how tough those girls were. I remember one girl, you know, cut her leg open, um, you know, and they, I think stitched her up, put a Band-Aid on her, and she's ready to go again. I was like, wow, this is impressive. In 2000, and we went to the World Series and we won it. And I can tell you, I had a chance to go coach baseball after the 2000 um, World Series. And I chose to stay in softball because I, I'd fallen in love with it. You know, one of the things that I had heard before I had gotten the job, or really before I started coaching on this job, was just how soft we were as players. I had a couple coaches who would tell me, hey, you've got, a, you've got a pretty cool place to go coach, great, great atmosphere, great venue, but your team is going to fold. They're going to fall apart. So I had to try to figure out how, a way to instill toughness. How do we learn how to win? And they, were more, they, weren't, they didn't care about how to win. They wanted how not to lose. I went right to our strength and conditioning uh, coach and said, you know, hey, they're all yours. I don't want to have a hand in this, but here's what I expect. Um, you run the baseball team, I want you to run the softball team even tougher. You lift the baseball team, I want you to lift the softball team even tougher. I don't want you to handle this team with white gloves. I want you to handle this team. I want you to break them. I want you to get them prepared mentally for wins. Good. If I hit a ground ball here, okay? If I hit a ground ball here, what do I do? Okay, stop. You can't ever back up here no matter what you do on a fly ball, whether it's a foul ball, fair ball, ground ball, you cannot back up. So she wants to work out and get herself into an up and out position. There you go. You can kind of see your back shoulder just dip just a little bit more, a little bit more of a dip in that back leg and really trying to stay up against that front side with this pitch here. I think the biggest transitional adjustment for us was pitching. Um, Stacy Stevens had done a good job uh, her junior and senior year. Stacy Nelson had done an okay job her freshman year, got better at the end of the season, and then she dedicated her, herself. Stacy was supposed to go to Jamaica after her freshman year with her mom on vacation, and I said, Stacy, you're going to go pitch. That was probably the biggest turning point when Stacy made that dedication, and then next year, she was an okay athlete. Next year, she dedicated herself to the strength and conditioning of our program. She became, you know, a Gator. Coach Walton and I clicked right off the bat because we just had an enthusiasm about Florida. I wanted to go to the school. I saw that he was the coach that was coming in and like I said, I had faith in him. But I'm kind of a jokester and uh, I wasn't as serious my freshman year as I was now. And so I don't want to say that Coach Walton and I butted heads at all, but there was definitely a process of him kind of getting me in line and teaching me how serious I needed to be in order to be a Division I softball player. She worked really hard. She was number one in every one of our runs, shuttle, sprint, long distance, it didn't matter. Stacy Nelson was one, running away from fast kids, just running away from them. There was definitely a big adjustment process on my end to realize that D1 softball at Florida is serious. It's a 24-7 job. Aubrey, you're catching. Who? When did you hit? Who's up right now? Alex. Okay. But not not occupied. If you're if it's occupied, you're out. Just stay. And the reason why you're going to stay is because now you might think she might think she needs to go, and you're already out. She tags her. It's a double play. Does that make sense? Yeah. I see you.
job, huh, baby? Good job. Two thousand and seven, we go to the super regionals and lose, and we lost. I think it was two to nothing. We beat um, Scarborough with a walk-off home run in, in the in the the game before, so we go to the if game, and that was really. We got to the World Series. We lost the first game in two thousand eight to Louisiana Lafayette in an extra inning home run. Then we had to fight all the way through the losers bracket. We got back to Texas A and M, who beat us the year before. They have Gibson coming back. We beat them. We have to go beat them again to get to the finals, and um, you know we lost. We came up short in nine innings. Had plenty of chances. Um, I think everything's incremental. It's steps, you know. So then, 2009, of course, we 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 walk right through. We go play for a national championship. We run into the hottest pitcher in all of the country, in Daniel Lori, and a very athletic Washington team. It actually hit me right away after we lost what those two years meant because the pain of losing was so strong. But I immediately realized once one of my best friends, Allie Gardner, struck out, came to the dugout, we gave her a hug, that no one would ever take away the experiences that I had with the people that were part of the program and that at the end of the day that was a, a memory things that I'd cherish much more than a win. Then in 2010, we go back and we didn't play as well at the World Series. 2011, some young kids and a freshman, Hannah Rogers, and injured Stephanie Brombacher. Boom, we get back to the World Series finals against, against uh, Arizona State. And, um, you know, I never really looked at it as a, as, a, as a, you know, kind of a pitfall where we fell and we didn't really achieve anything. Um, I wasn't even, it wasn't, didn't even cross my mind, you know, and I guess probably that's probably what Marv Levy felt like at, at, at Buffalo, you know, so many times losing to the Cowboys. I never felt that when I was experiencing it. I never went through that. It wasn't like I went, oh, here we are, we're coming to play for second. I never once really looked at it that way because every year the team's so different. You know, the 2008 and 9 teams were the same. 2011 was different. 2000, you know, 2013 when we went back to the World Series was different. 2000, so every year's been different. Um, so I never have really even, I, we've all learned from those experiences and I've changed my coaching style, I can tell you that. The biggest mistake I made in 2009, um, after we walked off with a two out, two strike, bases loaded, grand slam to win to go to the World Series Finals for our first ever, um, I didn't get them up, I didn't motivate them, I, I tried to make it just like another game, um, and it's not. Playing for a national championship is not like any other game, um, it's totally different. And if your players aren't prepared, it's going to be totally different in the wrong direction. And I think that's the biggest adjustment I've made in my coaching. You know, I've learned from the losses and have helped myself get, you know, get better and, and get my team better prepared. I wanted to do well because I was obviously at Florida and I knew I was there for a reason. But my junior year, we were a really great team. Um, and then we kind of went through a rough patch. Like Rocha, we were, we were all having meetings. Like we couldn't figure out what was going on. We couldn't figure out why we were losing. We were okay, and we knew it. We were okay. We just got a team that we, we lost to Georgia in the SEC tournament. First round, we went in, we, we laid an egg, we played poor. We came back in this room that I'm sitting in right now, we rewatched every inning, and I've never done that with a team. I've never broke down a game like that. Not broken down, but actually watched the commercials and sit through the torture of that game. I wanted them to feel the torture just like I felt the day before when we lost. We were, we were awful. And um, it, was very, it was very humbling to see how poor we played, how bad we caught, how bad we hit, how bad we pitched. Just a lot of things that we just didn't do very well. The team bought in. They bought in. We went in, we changed the culture, we got after it, we did some things, and we got hot. Um, we, 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 we won. Um, we, we got through and, and we ended up losing, I think, one game to Washington to, to go and then we beat them in the if game, and uh, Kirsty Merritt walked off that game with a big home run to send us to the World Series. And Hannah Rogers, wow.
all the great schools and we want to play everybody and we want to beat everybody. Rogers strikes her out and the regular season champion Florida Gators back on the postseason tournament title. I think Hannah always wanted to be a Gator, um, you know, being from Florida, that was kind of a big deal for her, was just to wear orange and blue, it was kind of in her blood, so that for her I think was probably the biggest thing, being able to step on the field and throw and be in front of her family. I think the reason that I wanted to go to Florida growing up is just because, well mainly my family has always been, we have always been really big Gator fans. and. You could tell they always played hard, they had really good sportsmanship, and I think that was the main reason I wanted to go there. Their stuff is already good when they get here. They have out pitches, they're, they're creating swings and misses, and ground balls and pop-ups and whatnot, but I just, I want them to learn the game a little more when they get here and understand how and why to use their pitches. Um, Hannah, on the other hand, was so super competitive, but it was all very much composed. And, um, you know, she didn't show a whole lot of emotion, but you knew that she was competing. Uh, Hannah Rogers was in a place that I hadn't seen her before. She was very average, had never pitched great at the World Series. Going through that rough patch and having to learn how to get out of that and how to look to our teammates for support and pick each other up when we needed it and still not give up on each other even when we were losing. She all of a sudden was a lot better than I think that everyone in the nation thought she was. She took her game to another level. She leaned on freshman Delaney Gorley and wanted a better off-speed pitcher changeup because hers wasn't very good and practiced and practiced and practiced and got it. Just got it, developed it, got it, and got to the World Series and was on fire. I give Hannah, to me, as much credit, if not more credit, for why we won the World Series in 2014 than I do the coaching staff. We did a good job, but Hannah did a better job. She really bought in to that, and the best part about, about that is we had an offense and a defense that just backed her up. If someone would have told me that all four years I would have been All-American, I would have been like, you're crazy. Or if someone would have told me I would have won a national championship, because obviously that's your goal. To like really sit back and think about that, like that's like a huge deal out of all these teams in the United States and your, your team is the best team. I have never seen a group of girls come in that they said they weren't supposed to be great and work so hard to give us a chance to have a future of this program. I recruited Lauren, saw her pitch um, in Kentucky at 16 under nationals, watched her pitch, um, and that was wow. You always hear things that pitchers can't hit or they're not good hitters, but then you have a perfect example of a pitcher who's really good at both. Winning the national championship my junior year with Hannah, I had already accomplished every goal that I could have ever imagined. Coach Walton was like, if I can get a group of girls to go from that to make it to the Women's College World Series, They've all been here for a year. I have the highest expectations for the next year.